माल्टीपल कोर्स पढ़ाई प्रिय मानस मान খুবই প্রিয় টিচারও ছিলেন এবং অবশেষে আমরা ওনার কলিগ হইতে পারেও আমরা যারা জুনিয়র ছিলাম মানে আমরা ওনার কলিগ হিসেবেও ছিলাম তো আমাদের মানে ওনার ওনার কোম্পানি আমরা খুবই এনজয় করতাম সো আমাদের জন্য এটা বলবো যে বিশাল লস একটা যে স্যার এখন আমাদের মাঝখানে নাই এবং একটা বিশাল পাওয়াও যে আজকে স্যার আমাদের সামনে টক দিতেছেন স্যার আপনাকে আপনার টাইমের জন্য थैंक यू लजिक दिए कथा मान তো গ্যান আর মানে গুণের কথা বলে শেষ করা যাবে না উই আর ভেরি প্রাউড অফ হিম অর মানে আরো ভালো করো এবং সব সময় ডিপার্টমেন্টের প্রতি প্রচুর কন্ট্রিবিউশন আছে এবং আশা করি সামনেও হচ্ছে কি সুযোগ মতো আমাদের সাথে যোগাযোগ থাকবে এই আর কি সারারকে অনেক ধন্যবাদ আমাদেরকে আবার একটু সময় দেওয়ার জন্য আমরা অনেক মিস করি আর কি এই হলো কথা হ্যাঁ আমিও খুব মিস করি আপনাদের সাথে কথা হয় না অনেক দিন তো ইট দিস ইজ এ ভেরি গুড অপরচুনিটি एवरीबॉडी सो टुडे आई विल टॉक ऑन I just tried to assemble some of my work in in some umbrella term so that I can have a um overall view of exactly what I am going to talk. So the title of the talk is um edge computing for data systems in a kind in in, in a kind of a broad sense uh, what we call a data systems here as is just um, so I'm I'm an assistant professor at University of Missouri Kansas City. I have been in in faculty in Boet for 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 many years for for around 10 years i believe and then and i have in good touch with a good company in fact with all these faculty designers i really appreciate their their time and things and i am very glad that i am here again to to talk some of my work here and i hope i will be joining some of there for that cc buit is making of course down the line if i have opportunities then so so this talk is about two things one is edge computing and then it's around data systems data driven systems so uh, uh, we are in the era of data i mean that's kind of the common term that we use it's a data era so what's data is everywhere and data is is prevalent abundant and the origin of the data comes from very versatile ways usually from the very fact that physical worlds are very much instrumented with sensors and there is a wide diversity of sensors out there smartphone smart building smart city these are the concept that's all coming on so that means that means you have you have sensors deployed in very much every living space you can think about it can be office it can be building it can be it can be streets it can be highways and sensors are diversified right it can be temperature sensor it can be air quality sensors it can be camera it can be audio uh, you, you can name them and then of course uh, we don't all we didn't really call them sensors anymore we can't just th- call them thing so that means it's a it's a network of things connected to the internet and then giving re- realization of this internet of things 
So that means it's kind of an ensemble of all different connectable devices and entities that are available connected. That's one aspect of the, these data generation issues. Another one is data is generated by people also. People uses social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, media streaming platforms, YouTube, Vimo, Spotify, Pandora. So these are all services, digital services and platform and, 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 and software entities or enterprise where the people interact and generate data. And the grand challenge of one of the grand challenges, I should say, is of all these big data systems is to, is to somehow derive value from the data. And to be more precise, it's to generate actionable information from, 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 from all these data that's coming along. And that's the one, the particular direction that I'll be focusing here, the, the, the methods and techniques that are applied to, to draw or to, to derive value somehow by making some explicit competition on it to derive actionable information and that information should be disseminated back to people. So, so the structure looks like uh, it, it, it has been contextualized with one particular project that I did when I was in postdoc in University of California Irvine. It's called a safe community alert network. So in this, it, the project has many, many aspects. One particular aspect that will let's see that we instrumented a, an elderly home space. So someone, some facility where the elderly people live and it's instrumented with sensors, floor mats uh, and other things. And, and they kind of try to monitor the people living there for their wellness and others. And so that means it's instrumented space and it generates data and that's generated is funneled back to a some, some centralized server or centralized computing infrastructure, maybe cloud or so through internet or other broadband connection. And, and in, in that way, in that facility, you kind of compute all these things to see exactly the whereabouts of the individuals. And most one particular example could be, okay, the, indiv the elderly individual living at that household, if they face any problem or they fell down or, 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 or they, they, they demonstrate any kind of sickness or something, or they become ill or something, then you need to take some sort of a reactive action immediately. For example, you can dispatch, you can dispatch emergency vehicle or you can call the doctor for certain reasons and so. So that means it's kind of a scenario where you have an instrumented space that kind of generates data and then that data goes to somewhere that gets processed in some meaningful way. And then you will need to provide some response back to, to the individual who, who is there or who, who, need, who needs to go there or who needs to take some action so that so that, that particular event can be, can be, can be taken care of. The whole thing can be abstracted out. I think this is one particular instance uh, we can think about, but we can think about these generic things happen in many, many different way. The one, one principal part of the whole operation is to observe something. So it's kind of observe cycle where you collect data from, uh, from, from the physical space that is instrumented with sensors, or it can be even observation on people generating data in social media and other thing. So observe is a kind of a data generation part. So where the volume of data comes in and then there is an analyze phase or analyze activity where the data gets the analyze process for, for, certain, for detecting certain event or for detecting certain trend. So it, it is very much subject to the, that, that, that scenario. And then when the analysis is done, it generates some actionable information on which certain action will be, uh, will be taken around. And that action can be in different form. It can be notifying somebody or it can be going somewhere. So, and then of course it kind of leads to, it can affect the action, can affect the physical space that can also change the observation pattern that will follow. So we can think about this is kind of an observe, analyze and act cycle. And this cycle is very common in many, many systems in IoT, mostly in cyber physical system. Any kind of system that kind of has a closed loop of data generation and data analysis and then, and, and then, and then making some actionable information from those data and, and allow the, those actions to take place. So we, we will try to refer this, this act, observe, analyze and act in certain, in, in other part of the, of the talk. So I just wanted to bring them up front. And in terms of computation pipeline, it's kind of very straightforward. So observe is the way that's, that's kind of the produces all this data. And then data goes toward the analyze tasks uh, that's kind of translates this data into some information somehow. And that information 
in some in some form we'll go to the action phase where the action will be taken to the to the to the to the specific reality that's that's be feeding to that particular application so one particular so these are the three phases and data comes here get processed and then and goes on to the user for taking some actions and so and in terms of in terms of these activities of different uh, in, in different stages we can name them in different terms whenever you say observe it can be sense it can be collect it can be feed it can be tweet so these are a different observe synonymous word we can think about these are we can think about some sort of a data data generation thing and then you have this analyze it can be compute it process infer learn predict so these are different verb word that can be done on collected data it can be it can be done offline it can be done online in real time and so and then after the analyze phase the data will be produced some new data will be produced that can be information out of derived out of that uh, those raw data and that information will be will be passed to the act phase and that act can be actuated but can be realized through actuation notification it can be deliver it can disseminate to users something like that and and in terms of entities who kind of perform this operation, we can think about observe happens on the on the devices. On the uh, it can be it can be done by sensors, device, apps, people. These are end end user entities or end user products or or, or sensors, device, application. So these are these are the data generators of the system, and then it goes to the analyze phase and. Analysis normally in de facto choice of analysis is some ser service infrastructure or some cloud infrastructure where the data goes and then, then some competition happens there in cloud. And then the activities when the data gets processed to generate some meaningful data out of it, it, it the activities goes to, goes to the actuators, maybe to devices, to the applications, to the people so who is supposed to take some action on that information on that data. So, so this is the phase of the thing. That means some part of the some part of the entities, a set of entities out there that kind of generates data and it's get processed somewhere. And then that after that processing, some information get generated, and that is given to the user again to act on it. So that's kind of the cycle. We didn't see the cycle; it's a one-way pass. But we can think about that act phase <clears throat> can of course connect to the physical reality, and then it can it can it can close the cycle. So. So edge computing kind of fits in, in the sense where it tries to bring computation closer to data and user. So the way we kind of describe the thing is that we, we collect all the data and then we pass all data somewhere and then get processed and then process data goes out to individual. So that means computation is, looks like very much centralized and happening only in the cloud or some designated data center server infrastructure. That shouldn't be the case. So there can be principal way by which the computation that is done on data can be brought far closer in terms of both user and data generator. So the edge computing is generally termed that. The edge computing is a facility or it's kind of a suit of technologies that tries to bring computation out of their cloud into, into somewhere near to, the, to, to, to data or to the user, whatever that befits the purpose. And and, and these are the two possible way the edge can manifest itself. It's, you, we can think about, it's kind of sitting between the, the central processing that's, been, that's empowered by cloud between the data generator. The edge can be manifested that way. That's what we, can, we call a data facing edge. And then edge can manifest also in the direction where the data is going toward the user in terms of some actionable information. Uh, it's on most on the dissemination, the dissemination path. So, so if any, any, any choice of this setup where you intervene the data in between uh, uh, data and cloud or cloud to user can be referred as an edge computing thing in, in, in some broad sense. It has many flavor and that we'll be discussing. So one flavor is that you have data collection systems where the data get collected and it, it goes to the, to the processing node. So edge can manifest in that way that the main purpose of that, that edge will be to intercept data when they are going to the cloud. So that means that it's a it's it's a data facing or or data facing edge. The edge can manifest the other side of the of the of the setup is when the data is going is delivered to the, the user, uh, in, in in some sense or so, and then edge computing can happen in between when when it, it reaches the user. 
So normally these are called notification systems, delivery system, dissemination system. So th these, are the, these, are the, these are the things where the competition is happening towards for a particular set of users. And, and depending on which side of the thing edge happens um, in these two choices, the, the computational tasks of, of, the, of the set of problems that arrives on those situation changes. And there can be situations where you can have an end-to-end -end system, the full cycle systems, where you have the data generation and then the computation happen and then actionable information is derived. And then you disseminate the whole information to user and edge can manifest itself uh, in both ways. So in that case, you can think about edge is a, some sort of a circular thing that kind of surrounds the cloud infrastructure, separating data and, 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 and cloud or, or, or end users. So we'll be seeing some version of these things. So in terms of, in terms of cloud facing, cloud facing issues, that means, okay, data is coming toward the cloud. So that means data is get generated and then it's moving towards the cloud to get something get processed to, to, to see its analyze phase. And it can sit there and then can intervene or intercept the data to have to do some meaningful operation on it. And the list of choice of operation that can be done on that edge point uh, is versatile. And, and um, so you can think about this can be a, one of the main tasks of this this intercept is to volume the reduction of data. So data is generated out there, and if think think about it's a it's an infrastructure of of of, of let's think of, think about it's a smart city situation. You have lots of sensors, cameras, audio sensors. These are all producing data, and this data is funneled to the cloud for some processing to be done. But in between, some computation can happen on the edge point that will try to reduce the volume of data. Um, without losing any information contained in it, some sort of a volume reduction things. Redundancy reduction is another thing. Data is inherently redundant in, 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 in many, many different setup. And redundancy can come from many, many different facts. And we'll be seeing one particular example. So partial data processing, data can be partially processed. So that means, for example, you wanna run some video analytics at the, at the, at, 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 at the, at the cloud, but you can do some frame instructions some filtering of data before it goes to the cloud so that the volume of data gets reduced or some meaningful competition happens even before it reaches the, the service infrastructure of the cloud. Data upload planning, sometimes that's important because it's dependent on, 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 the, on, the, on the connectivity of the thing. Let's say that you have an edge point and you have a cloud infrastructure, but the cloud infrastructure may not be always available. So some processing can be partially done or you cannot so that some, some storage point can be there that kind of saves or that kind of stores all this data if cloud becomes not available or there is some outage in the cloud. So you can temporarily hold the data and then upload the data in the cloud when that situation results, something like it's kind of some sort of an upload planning. So when the data gets uploaded and to, to the cloud and so and how much, how much time you're going to hold and, and, and so. And that situation becomes more and more interesting when you have when the situation happens when things are mobile and 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 mobile infrastructure using the mobile cellular network those kind of the particular thing um, has this particular issue. State estimation is also another thing because this edge sits between connects the sensors or the devices to the cloud. So what is the status of the devices uh, that have and our devices have the consistent connection to the cloud or not? Those kind of things can happen some sort of an anomaly detection, aggregation, summarization. These are also different tasks that can happen in that phase. In the other side of the edge, where the edge is sitting between cloud and user, so where the data is flowing from the cloud towards the user. So there's some other interesting competition can happen in that angle also. So that's the thing is very much the alert and notification generation, customization of notifications. Let's say you have a certain user that is that has a certain way of communication or certain way of resources. They have a mobile phone, they have a desktop machines. Depending on what, what is the end user endpoint is, depending on that, some competition can happen to customize the notification for that individual user or set of, set of such users. Content adaptation, contents are, content adaptation is another techniques. You are delivering some content to a particular user, but, and then we can customize that those users based on exactly what is the bandwidth that particular user has. For example, if the user is behind a mobile connection or a cellular connection, then bandwidth may be limited. So the content that are delivered to that particular user need to be customized in a certain way. Caching and staging of data, that's another interesting problem there. So for example, that's very much the reason that, for example, users are connected to the, to the service point, 
but they are not connected all the time. So someone needs to take care of their data when they are offline, something like that. So this is staging of data, holding data somewhere uh, when it's get out of the cloud and reaching the, reaching the user. So somewhere it, it gets cached, but temporarily, it's not for the persistent storage because, because edge is far, uh, far less powerful than the cloud infrastructure. So, so, so the storage capacity that we are referring is not that big. So, and, and the interesting question comes exactly how that prioritization can happen. Managing end devices, that's kind of the similar to the data generation part also. So because the user is there, so their, their reception of data, their activities act back to the system can also be managed from the edge. Handling macrofox, one of the interesting aspects of it, this is a user facing part. So you, number of users are big, depending on the application, it can be big, it can be. So there is some scalability issues there. So managing them, these are these are these are entities or users. They have list some sort of an less powerful devices with them, but they are big in numbers. So number kind of plays a big role. So it's not individually they are not strong. Of course, they are all individual human, but but the number of hu such humans, number of such apps or that user in general are kind of large that's normally called mega fox so that means it's kind of it's, it's kind of it's kind of big small entities so there can be some particular challenges that can arrive in that directions too and this is since this is a dissemination path so that means some this information is getting disseminated towards the end user so there should be a reliability issues so that can be another interesting angle that can be done Scalable notification that's in, in align to this Megafox thing. So that means uh, that means you have you have big numbers of users and you want to disseminate some information to those users. How that can be done scalably and reliably. So these are the different aspects of we can think about the problem arises when data goes towards to the cloud and when data goes out of the cloud to the to the users. So, so one aspect we are calling is we're calling is um, the cloud facing edge and another one is is user facing edge so in terms of these two direction of where the edge can manifest itself so i did with my with my group with my peers and other researchers and collaborators a bunch of work on this area and a couple of them i just mentioned here so in this talk uh, in this talk i'm going to just talk uh, maybe two of them one problem from the data fa the cloud facing edge and another Another problem. Another problem on on the user facing edge, and these are all. At this point, I wanna I wanna read these 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 are the work in done in collaboration with many many people and and some of some of some of the work done with my students at Buet and also in other universities when I was doing postdoc and I was doing my PhD. So it's kind of a summarizes many of the tasks um, in this direction, and I'm I'm going to acknowledge them all here. I'm not able to mention all of their names, but but I am very sincere to expressing my thanks and, 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 and extend my appreciation for all these tasks that we tried to do over the time. Okay, so, so let's see. I mean, these are, the, these are the two problems that we'll be talking. The cloud-facing edge computing, that means data collection. This data is moving toward the cloud. So let's assume we can think about edges sitting in between and then, and then data is going towards the cloud and the edge is going to intercept the data and do something meaningful on it. So one particular problem that I choose to discuss is this data volume reduction. So exactly data gets redundancy in it and there should be some way to reduce it. And one particular project that we did is called Inverse Scale that we can, we can describe here. And the paper was published in Infocom and ARM, Adaptive Middleware Workshop. And another, another perspective of the edge is user facing edge. So when the data is moving toward the users, data gets processed in the cloud and now it's moving toward or get processed or content being generated and content is moving, is being delivered to the users. So oh, there are two particular problem we can, we'll be discussing one is the end notification depending on my time. And uh, it's called rich note. And then another problem um, is called ca around caching and staging of data at, at the edge. It's called edge caching for big active data. And that's the two problem that I will, be trying, I will try to discuss. So let's get to the first problem that's volume reduction when data moves toward the cloud. So this is a story of EnviroScale. Original project is scale, that's the community alert network, but we extended it for some other scenario and, and EnviroScale is one of them. Uh, it's a task, it's, it's, it's an IoT for urban sensing. It's, it's an urban sensing scenario where you deploy sensors to, to, uh, to observe air quality 
is one part of the example, one part of the example that I choose to explain here. It's a task I did in when I in Bangladesh and I did with my master, with my undergrad students, Mamu this year, Amatur. They did a very, very, very wonderful work on that. And then we extended the work with the collaboration with Taiwan National Xinhua University uh, with Professor Chen Xing was there and he has his team um, that also participated in later on extended the work in some other new directions. And these are all done um, in, in collaboration with these teaching institutions, University of California, Irvine, Buet, and, and, and National Xinhua University. Some of the work is still continuing. I'm still continuing some of the work uh, with, with that collaboration. But I'm going to here describe exactly what we did when I was in Buet with my students. So this is, a, this is an urban sensing scenario where you, you instrumented physical lens, a physical space of an urban area for, for, for perpetual monitoring of a space. And one particular example could be pollution monitoring. So it's air quality monitor noise, uh, it can be garbage or those kinds of things. So what we did is that we developed some sort of a multi-sensor IoT box, uh, Internet of Things box. Uh, and you can see one, one such box that we call Enviroscale. It has sensors, it's built by, uh, uh, by students. I think it's an ice cream box where you put all these sensors and then you, you, have, you have battery on it. And then it, it has a modem by which it can connect. And it has sensors, gas, uh, gas sensors, temperature sensors, humidity sensors, dust sensors, and also audio sensors on camera. And, and so these are in situ sensors. That means that can, they can be fixed with, uh, the, the, they are fixed in, in certain locations. You deploy them and then they measure all these, uh, all these environmental indicators and then send that data to the, to the edge or, or to the cloud to, to get processed. The same instrument can be done. The same instrumentation can be done with the mobile phone also. Mobile phone comes with a diversified set of sensors also, and and their 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 service can also be taken to collect data, and that can be done with a crowd assisted way. So these are the two 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 choice of sensor deployments. One is a fixed infrastructure, fixed sense deployment that's in situ, and another one having people carrying all these sensors. Another, another way we extended the thing. So this is, this is a fixed box that can sit somewhere and then could detect thing. Uh, we have another version that kind of sits on a bicycle so that whenever rooms, someone roams around in the campus and they can monitor what's happening when they're riding by. Uh, but, but that setup has a little bit different in terms of casing and other thing because they have to be more ruggedized so that it can be mounted on a, on a, on a bike. But, but in, in terms of functionality, it kind of looks very similar. So the purpose is the, so the, sen the, the whole operation of this sensor is to build some sort of a fine grain, high resolution spatiotemporal pollution map so that I can have a map of which part of the area, which part of the city or which part of the campus is kind of more, uh, more noisy or more, more uh, has issues with the air quality. And so in terms of in space and also in terms of time, which time of the, which time of the day is more, is more polluted versus the other team, uh, other time. So the the goal of this data collection or the whole operation of data collecting is to is to produce some sort of a high resolution spatial temporal map so that we can know the degree of pollution or degree of air quality in time and space. And and the main challenge we, we wanted to face on that particular project is to upload useful data to the cloud so that we don't want to send all data towards the cloud inherently because two, two, pro, two issues. One is the bandwidth can be limited. As we said that sometime this deployment happens to the mobile network. So mobile network doesn't have fat bandwidth so that you can send any data you want. And interestingly, you don't need to send because data is redundant in some sense. Redundant, redundant both in time and space. So you have multiple people going in a certain place and detecting a certain event, very much the same event. So that's, you don't need to send all of them. And, and in time also, right? So there can be, so you got some reading at this time, but you can wait for certain time to send the next data. So that means, that means some, some way data has inherent redundancy in them and that can be eliminated before it can upload it to the to the to the to the cloud or to the processing station, so there are two ways we can we, we we can try to solve it. One is the reduce the data volume at the device itself. So you have the, this sensor box. Sensor box has computing nodes, and normally sensor box are instrumented with Raspberry Pi. That's a low processing device, but it still can do some processing. Um, and in terms of in terms of pruning data, that may be limited, but it can do something. Uh, and we try to do that. It's kind of it, it, it's, it's to prune redundant data on the device themselves, even before you, you pass the data to the edge point or even to some in another process. It doesn't leave out of the device. 
if it's if it's somehow assumed to be redundant in some sense. And we tried to do one is, is a really important sampling. So we tried to derive some sort of an importance value associated with, uh, with, with the data. And one particular way we did is that we kind of tried to measure exactly the degree of variation across readings a long time. And then when there, there is a high variance of data, high variance of the data, then it can, it, can, it can signal that it's an important thing and then you need to send. So some degree of some sort of sampling can be done on the device them so that will prune in redundant data on the device itself before it sent to the cloud. So we did some work on that. Another one is that you do redundancy reduction by coordination. So individual device may not know exactly what is the end application goal is. So you need some degree of coordination. Um, and that coordination is very important when you have the combination of in situ sensor deployments and you have these mobile sensor deployments. And some data is coming from static sensors and some data is coming from from mobile sensor, then there need to be a number, some sort of a metadata aggregation uh, between these two generations is so that they can be, uh, redundancy can be detected. And then uh, with that detection, data can be pruned that way. Or data can data collection can itself can be coordinated. So you don't activate all of your sensors all the time. So you can have a scheduling of it. So that's the thing we'll, we're doing. Normally this is suitable for community wide deployments where you have a collection of sensors deployed and then you, and then we want to see exactly how, how the data needs to be collected in a coordinated way so that the unnecessary data is not collected. Unnecessary sensing operation is not happening. So how does it happen? So we need, we need to deploy some sort of an edge controller sitting there who will kind of detect exactly who we're going to sense when and, and when he is going to upload. That's kind of an, some sort of an activation plan. So in terms of setup, you can think about this is a space that one, that is under study and it's lots of I mean, it's a couple of sensors and dense deployment sensors are out there. And different sensors has different types of responsiveness to their collection. Some sensors are very sensitive to their timing and some sensors have very special coverage in their reading. So, so based on that, th those information can be accumulated to a, some sort of an edge controller so that will observe all the meta information about this deployment, who is sensed where, the location information of, of the sensors, the, the energy level of those sensors, the, the data properties of those sensors or so. And those states that state, we can, we can use it some umbrella term that's called states towards the towards an processing point, edge controller. That controller will generate some activation plan so that, and those activation claim will be funneled back to the sensor so that they, they know exactly what time they are going to sense the space or not. The goal is that at the end of the day, we want to generate data in a volume that is befitting to the budget that we have. So, so it's a reduction effort. So the, the, the coordination will happen in the direction that it will, it will allow the activation happen in a certain way so that the volume remains bounded within a certain, a certain amount. And one best way, the purpose is that we want to get some good coverage in space and time. The best strategy you sense everywhere, every time, right? So you don't lose any information, but that's too much expensive, right? So we cannot sense every time, everywhere. So th that means, so what we did is that some sort of an spatial temporal impact of sensor reading. The key idea is that whenever you collect the data in a certain time and space, it has some some ambient coverage around so that you don't need the same data to be collected at the same time or at the same place. So, so that degree of redundancy can be eliminated. So, and the sensor reading can be collected. So that means you can delay some sensor reading in that, in that, in that time, in, in, that, in that space, or you can, you can sense from a different location because it's, it's separated in a space. That's the kind of the key concept here. And then it can be formalized. So the, the overall goal the edge controller is doing is that it's collecting all these state information and then trying to activate least number of sensors out there so that it kind of maximizes the overall space time coverage. So to, to capture this state time coverage, we need to discretize the whole thing because time and space both are continuous. So, and, 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 and modeling with the continuous space and time, it's hard. Uh, it's, it's, and it's, not, it's, it's very much intraceable. So we, then, we need to split the entire time into some time frames. It's kind of a window of per operation. And then the similar way you can partition the entire space into some kind of a cell like this. So that means you have different cells. You had a space segment, space segments where we know that, okay, some segment is covered. And each node remains exactly one cell, one time frame. 
So this, this, the sensor also has locations where he's producing the data and we know the cell and the specific time frame he's there. And then we need to define exactly the coverage of the thing. So coverage means that a like, cell is become covered when there, there is some sensor who is covering, who is there. So that, that is absolutely pure coverage. That means a cell is covered when some sensor is out there and collecting data. A, a cell can be partially covered by nearby cells, right? Nearby cells in terms of time, both as well as in terms of, uh, as well as space. <clears throat> and, and those partial covers can, let's see that I have this, this sensor and this, uh, the, uh, so the, I have the some covers happening here and here and here, but I don't have any covers here, but I can have some partial covers from all the nearby covers that's happening, both in time and both in space. So that's the, uh, that's the thing that we, we, we model. And then we kind of translates everything in terms of two things. One is called covers and another thing, Another, another, uh, another, another thing is, is is utility. That means if you if you have more sensors collecting data from a certain segment of the space, then it's better. That means your utility is high. But of course, it's not additive in linear fashion. It's it has declining gain. If I have two sensors collecting data from one place and I have a third sensor, then the value of the third sensor kind of diminishes uh, because there are already two sensors working there. So that's, a, that's an interesting connection here in terms of coverage and utility that's we wanted to capture. So in terms of problems, we are given this, the entire description of the space. That means it's, 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 it's cells and time frames and device location. These are the information that's given. And then some sort of an impact function that will determine exactly how sensitive a particular sensor uh, with respect to its time lag and space separation. So that's that's we call normally uh, that's what we call here a special temporal impact function. There are certain impact functions that are designed um, both in time dimension and space dimension. The end result is to produce some activation plan that will say exactly which sensor will be activated at which which time frame and which cell. And it kind of looks into three three performance metrics, and it's intent to maximize this coverage. Um, a coverage is the coverage is the one whether you have a certain sensor deployed in a certain cell or not and then utility and the number of active nodes. The whole, the whole activation plan try to maximize this coverage as well as this utility, but try to minimize how many active nodes are there because I don't wanna deploy unnecessary sensors that are not required. And the constraint is that the volume of data that generates after this activation by this activation uh, should remain within a bound. So, I mean, uh, more formally, this is the this is a multi-objective optimization problems, and it uh, so in terms of the activation plan, it it connects all these coverage metric and utility metric and number of active modes and try to maximize the weighted sum of these three things, uh, subject to a constraint. And one of the interesting aspect of this problem is that this is a time dynamic situation. So the the, the the optimization equation kind of changes with time and then we need to we need to take care of those things and there are there are other stochastic scenario uh, out there that need to be handled and it uh, so the so solution is uh, this this problem is on the set is a is is in behard because it's a it's a it's a it's a binary choice problem it's it, it, it assembles to knapsack problem under the hood so we choose a greedy heuristic to solve it and greedy heuristic said that um, the thing is that we are we're after two we are for two metrics. One is coverage and utility. So the, 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 the technique is, is, is simple in the sense that you go for the technique, you go for the activation of those, those sensors that kind of give the largest marginal gain in, in terms of coverage and utility. That's kind of the basic, uh, basic things and it kind of does iteratively over the collection. And we need to do some control uh, theoretic uh, um, control framework here because the because the time dynamic nature of the setup it's not in one instance of the problem that can be solved and we get an activation plan for the whole time it's not really that it kind of changes with time and all this matters information all the state information that we are referring is also changing with time so that means it has a uh, it has a control uh, control element in, under the hood that we call we, we use a Lyapunov control framework for that so. Uh, the, the key idea is that data volume can occasionally increase, uh, exceed your budget when you have some useful data to send, but you need to get back to the to, to your original budget when you can. So, so that the overall budget across the entire operation kind of remains bounded. So that's that's kind of the main thing. So in terms of the result, what do we want to, we want to show that we send less amount of data, but it still get the same utility of the data. So that's the thing results kind of shows. So that means this is the this is the number of amount of data that get generated. So if you don't do anything, you don't control the data, then of course it kind of grows this this way. It's kind of a very 
very linearly with the number of nodes that are deployed. But but if you have and it kind of violates the quota or the budget that you have. But if you have control like this, you have a coordinated way of collecting data, then of course you can limit your data collection at a certain bound. The data will never cross that limit, but of course it will not suffer in terms of utility. Utility or the coverage still remains high and you can still construct this spatiotemporal map uh, with, with, with no loss or uh, with little to, little to no loss of information out there. It's kind of constructing the same very much very much similar or same granularity spatiotemporal temporal map, but with less amount of data that was generated there. And this is all achieved because you have an edge controller that kind of controls your uh, active, uh, controls your sen sensing and then can, can affect the, the volume of data that gets generated. So that's a one example how the edge can manifest itself in the, on the way of data going from the collection point to the crowd. So that in, in the direction where the data get redundancy gets reduced for certain application here. Um, oh, so, so let's get back the other aspect of the, of the thing that I said, it's user facing edge. That means the edge is sitting between the cloud and the user. So data is moving towards the user and then edge is doing some competition out there to, to have the user have a meaningful uh, data delivery. So one particular problem that I will be talking about is this enriched notification. Uh, it's called rich note, we saw it and it's in collaboration with UC Irvine, Max Planck Institute and um, University of uh, University of Norway, and this is what I did when I was in postdoc at UCI. And then, and uh, and then at some point, um, so what is what is what it does is that it takes a it takes a data to go to the user. So, and one particular example of data we are referring here is media data. Media data is very is very common, is very is very prevalent, and and I think I, I think these days we kind of we kind of collect or observe media data enormously in our daily life. It's images, in videos, in audios. And, and, and with the numbers, we can face numbers. Let's see, the, let's see the Facebook kind of handles 500 million media media content every day. Twitter also has pictures uh, posted. Spotify is a music streaming service. That's a particular example that we'll be using here. So, and, and media, since the media content are kind of heavy and, and it, it goes to the user, and normally the interaction model is that, okay, the users receive a notification of the media content and then user goes out and consume that particular content. And, and normally this is done through this push notification service, right? And push notification is the one by which the media content is get ready for a certain user. And then whenever the user receives a notification, then he can sense that uh, he can sense, uh, he, can he can download the data from the, from the foreign media server and consume it. One of the interesting aspects is push notification is just a text message, just a signal. It doesn't really contain any information in it in, in most popular cases. So what we tried is it's kind of a variable text messages and as some sort of in terms of, in terms of content, it kind of contains some matter information and user need to go and fetch the content to consume it. And the interesting part is the user doesn't know exactly which is the content is being referred there. So it can show, okay, someone posted a photo, but what is that photo about? Or, or someone someone uploaded a new video there, but it doesn't have any, the user doesn't get any any content out there. It's just a signal saying that, okay, I have the video. So in terms of enriching the notification, what we thought is that we can set, instead of sending some sort of a raw signal, we can have a, some, sort of, some sort of snippet of the media content inside that. So in that case, in, in that case, you know, we, we have a, so that means someone posted a someone posted a video, or someone posted an image, or someone posted an audio clip. The notification will contain some snippet of it. But the question is exactly what should be the size of that snippet. It can be versatile in different content. For example, if it's a picture, then it can be different sizes, right? It can be ten pixel by twenty pixel, twenty pixel by ten pixel, 50, 50 by ten, and so. It is audio, then it can be five second, ten second, and something like that. If for its video, it can be different sizes. So these are all these are all different presentation levels we can think about. So that means that here the, the problem is that you have this server that's that's con delivering content to the user, and you have an edge server sitting between that kind of sees all this interaction, and then adapt the content in a coding way. So that means let's say the media server generates a push notification to the edge server, and and then the media server will, will the edge server will go to the server and will fetch the media content for that particular user. And then of course we will produce some 
rich notification that will contain some piece of this media content with the notification so that user know that okay i am i am i'm notified about this particular content that is a media content that is an image let's see and then this is the image look like in very small thumbnail you can think you can think about so that means you receive a notification that says okay a new song is released and here is his 10 second preview something like that or 5 second preview or maybe 2 second review and that conversion of that adaptation of the content is happening at the edge server the the media content provider that's the edge the cloud infrastructure or the media content server doesn't doesn't know that that customization has been made it's it's happened closer to the user because 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 that notification is customized for that particular for the particular user and takes into account that particular user scenario right i mean whether he's moving now what is the budget he has what is the energy level that device has all these other informations are leveraged here so this is a competition a competition in entities that sits between the user and cloud and kind of process the data on the fly so and 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 that and that competition takes into account the constraint that the user has and two constraints are are considered here one is the this data budget that's because this user is sitting behind an um, mobile network or wireless network that can have a limited budget and then energy level of course this is a mobile device so energy is a big issue so edge server will take care of those information will will use those information to customize content so that it the specific user gets 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 the exact level of that media content um, be feeding to its current situation and so that means the overall goal is the which notifications to enrich which which media snippets so that so that it gets to the user and and what degree of detail so it's a utility driven approach and it adheres to the user constraint and <clears throat> so So, you, so that means the content needs to get some utility score out of it. How valuable the score, the content for the user. So there are two perspective in that utility. One is how relevant the content to the user is. Is this content relevant for the user in question? That's kind of relevancy score. And then how useful the notification could be. If I send a five second pre preview versus if I send ten second preview, what is the relative value between them? so that that's another level of utility and and what we get is that we multiply both of them to get the what is the overall utility so so content utility comes as a factor of the content types so and it depends on many factors one is the freshness of the content if it's a new item then it's more relevant if it's an old item then it's not relevant something like that how many social attention that that content is re receiving and so it can be learned from the statistical historical data also and then presentation utility is that is how much value it gets if i send a notification of size 5 second versus 10 second or i'm sending a 20 pixel by 20 pixel size versus 32 pixel by the it's very subjective it's very subjective is is this is since this is a media content so it's it is subject to the particular user so we need to model a particular a particular particular we need to train a certain model so that that can predict the utility for the particular uh, for the for a particular user so so these are the two utility that are combined and then we we our goal is to kind of some sort of an some sort of a go for a certain selection for particular media content in a certain richness so that the overall utility across all users that are subject to there is kind of maximized under the hood it kind of translates into um, into multi multi choice knapsack problem and and we can use the traditional multi choice knapsack heuristic for it it's kind of an utility size trade off so you can you can always go for the higher size content but that will be always coming at the cost of your higher bandwidth utilization or higher exceeding your budget or so another interesting aspect is i mean that's a critical one in fact so the constraint that we are referring here the bandwidth constraint energy constraints or energy scenario or the bandwidth scenario that the particular user has is time dynamic so these are changes with time so that means we need a, some sort of a stochastic control framework to handle that and and we and we did we did in a certain way to to manage that so we did that is experiment of customizing content for audio content i mean we did some experiment with spotify data spotify is a music streaming service that that notifies users whenever some new uh, new new movie new new audio clips uh, new music available so what we wanted to do is that okay instead of instead of just notifying okay you have got a music we also we also we also tell okay what is the snippet of the music some segment of the music is played there user listens it and if the user likes the music then he can download the music and and, and listen so and and we got some trace from spotify with some uh, we need to sign a non non disclosure agreement with them 
and then we kind of train these models to have to uh, to to infer this content utility and also presentation utility and the overall result is that okay you can you can have a higher average utility when you do this kind of enrich notification and notification helps in the direction that okay user may, may not like certain content so you never deliver a content that is not favorable by the user you always de deliver content that are usable by the user and and the degree of richness that you introduce there depends the likability of that content by that particular user this is very much a per user model so so depending on the particular users certain content utility model is derived and then based on that the content is get customized some sort of an, um, a meaningful way. The customization here is that whether you can send 10 second preview, 20 second preview, 30 second preview, or 40 second preview. Obviously, if you can send high, higher, higher second, and of course, it's better for the user only if he likes it. If he doesn't like it, then sending a 40 second review, it just, just expanding your data budget. So that's the trade-off we need to make. And 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 then it kind of so the result shows that if we activate this rich note thing with that activation competition in there, then we can we can increase the, we can produce the higher utility across all the users that we are considering. If we go with some some fixed size representation, let's say always send ten second preview, always send fifteen second preview, then the utility is not that big. That's kind of the that's kind of the trade off here, and we can still be within the budget of the of the thing. So we are not. So that means that the technique is not uh, is, is not exceeding the budget that is allocated for the notification to be sent. It's still within the budget. Uh, that, that's the weekly budget, but can still send some mixture of this thing. For some content, it's sending. Let's see, here we can see exactly what is the mixture of different content. You see, if you as as you go, since let's you have less budget, that means more of the most of these notifications will be with smaller content. Let's see, you have the purple. Hi, that means these are all five second preview because your budget is low. So that means you cannot go for the higher, higher, longer preview. But if you increase your budget, then of course you can, prog uh, we can the user can progressively go and more rich notifications out there. You can have more uh, a lengthy, I mean, uh, longer preview it's available. So th the technique is applied for Spotify because we have some connections through Norway in the Spotify thing, Spotify is a European company. But the same techniques can be applied with images also. And we also tried one version for images, uh, but we are not, uh, we didn't show the results here. <clears throat> but, but, but the general techniques kind of looks very much the same. You need to know exactly what's the relevant of your, relevance of your content and then how the richness play with that particular user. And we need to train a certain model so that it can predict uh, the, the usability of the content, the utility of the content. And then using that information, we kind of control it. Okay, so that's a, that's a, that's an example where a, an edge computing node, a kind of computes a compute node, kind of sits in between the cloud, that's our media content server, and then user, and can do some customization of the content as media contents is flowing from the from the user to the to the user um, from the from the from the cloud to the user. So the next problem that we we will be, we'll be talking is uh, is called edge caching. It's a caching problem. So we, we talked at the very beginning that edge can sit in between user and 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 cloud, and the data is moving from the cloud to the user. So edge can can sit in between kind of stage data, send cache data for some time for some transient 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 time, and we apply this uh, this principle or this technique in certain uh, in, in a project that's called big active data. So before we go to the, that particular problem, uh, what is this big active data? Big active data is, is bad. I mean, that's the, that's, the, that's the acronym is used. It's not a good one maybe, but, but that's the term that is preferred. It's a joint effort uh, with the University of California Irvine and University of California Riverside. So it's, it's, it's an ongoing project, it's still going. I'm still part of it in, in, some, in, 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 this, in, in, in the connection that I have. So, so what, what it's, it's doing, it's kind of translating data in active form. So traditional data system that we know of, it's pretty much passive. That means you pass a query and then you get the result. It's, it's, it's kind of a passive way of answering your, your, answering your questions, answering the questions. Active, active, active data system means that you, you, you have a perpetual query in the system. It's not about that whenever a query is made, data is, is obtained. Is that the, the, the question is always there in the system and whenever data comes, then answer is returned to the user. It's kind of 
proactive in, in terms of responding to the user. The user gives the user gives all his requirement or all his interest ahead of time in the system. And then whenever systems gets a data that kind of satisfy the user query, then system kind of proactively responds. So that's a, that's a one version of this activeness, what is really mean to be activeness. And this is a this is this this envisions to be a, some sort of a next generation notification system. And the the thing is that it, so so it, this needs to handle a large number of users out there, and it can be it can be applied for many many different scenarios. For example, uh, the, the example that we saw is the air pollution thing. Let's assume you you, you are in a smart city case where the, you can the people can receive notifications whenever air quality in a certain section doesn't work. Or, or air quality in a certain section kind of um, kind of bad, so you you want to notify users with that information. So that means it's not necessarily user asking the system that okay, let, let me know what is the air quality right now. It's the other way around. So user kind of subscribe to the system, and then whenever air quality is bad, the, that user is notified. Something like that. So that means it's in the background, it's kind of doing all this competition behind, even the user is not there to asking the system every time. So it's it it can be termed as a as a, as a computing entities that kind of process data as they come and then notify a specific user uh, when, when that specific user needs to get some information from the system. So that's the thing. And uh, the, under the hood, the whole project kind of kind to do the scalable data processing and in, in the back end and a scalable distributed data delivery plane. So it, ha it has a data delivery plan that kind of faces the user. And also in the background, it has this processing engine that kind of connects all this data process them and deliver. So it has, it has three pieces and I will be discussing just one piece, but I will just describe the, uh, the overall scenario just in a very snippet way. So it, it, it resembles the whole system, the whole, the whole project, the big active data resembles to public subscribe system, but a little bit of difference in traditional public subscribe system, the subscriber subscribe. And whenever a publisher publish something, it kind of goes to the publisher. It kind of goes to the subscriber and in and, and the same original content. But in this scenario, the content is never delivered to the subscriber as it is. Instead, instead, the publishers, there can be multiple publishers who can publish that data. And those data are, are kind of computed here. It's kind of some joint operation or some kind of an aggregation that can take data from multiple publishers uh, that we normally call multiple data stream and then combine them together in some meaningful way, depending on the application, depending on the user query and then process some new data for the subscriber. So unlike publisher subscriber, where you see the publication happens and the same publication reaches to the subscriber, here that is not the case. Publication goes to some big data store and then that get processed and then the data goes to the subscriber. And, and in terms of that additional computation, uh, that we normally call some sort of an enriched notification. So it's not the original publication goes toward the subscriber it's some, somewhere in, the, in between you need to do some extra computation that kind of aggregates data from multiple sources somehow and then delivers it. So that's kind of the overall, I mean, a, a big difference between traditional pop sub and bad. And, and in terms of data delivery, it needs, it has two things. One is the data cluster that kind of process all this data. So that means someone need to custody, someone need to store all this data coming from all these publishers and need to come need to do all these back end computation that is going there and that is normally done by some big data management system and usually uh, usually that is done by asterisk asterisk is a is a big data management management service out there and then there is a dissemination plan when uh, this the dissemination network so where the, you have you have subscribers out there and then whenever data get processed and ready to deliver to the user and that delivery is handled by a set of edge brokers that are sitting closer to the subscriber. They're collecting data from big data management system. We, we call it data cluster or backend and then deliver to the individual subscriber. This is the user facing edge. So, so these, are the, these, are the, these are the servers, these are the edge brokers that are sitting and they're connecting the subscriber and, and, and they're intercepting data collect, uh, they're getting data from the backend data cluster and then will deliver to the end users. And the main responsibility of this edge broker is to cache the result for the user for, uh, for, for in certain time and also ensure some reliable delivery to the to the to the to the to the, to the subscribers. So and in, in, in this this whole interaction has lots of details in it, but I'm just skipping all of them then. But here is you can think about the whole architecture kind of looks like this. You have a subscribers, you have publishers, sorry, publishers kind of publishes data, and those publications happen to go in a data cluster that kind of 
stores the data there and also runs all these backend queries that are subscribed by the subscribers. And then whenever the results get produced, it kind of delivered to this edge broker. This is, this is a, there is a network of brokers available. These are edge uh, servers. You can think about edge servers or edge brokers. And they're connected to the subscribers. And then whenever content gets ready at the data cluster, they are delivered to the edge broker. And then edge broker kind of delivers all this data to the subscriber. So I, I'm showing it's the kind of a one-way path, but there is a, there is a loop inside uh, that we can, we can skip from this discussion. So our main emphasis is to see exactly what this edge broker is doing. The edge broker is facing the clients, facing the subscriber, facing the user, and ensuring the reliable delivery of these results to the subscribers and holding the data there for some time. So, and that's the problem that will be, that's particular the problem that I'll be discussing here. It has other functions also uh, that of course need separate discussion. So the whole construct has, I mean, BAD has some constructs, some software construct inside in terms of handling all these operations. So there are three entities, as, as you can think, there are subscriber who kind of subscribes to, the, to, the, to, the da to their data. And that subscription goes through, goes to the <clears throat> edge broker. And then it's reached to the data cluster. Data cluster has, um, data cluster has two, two constructs. One is called data set. Data set is nothing but the publication comes in. The publisher publishes data to the data sets. Here the, we see four data set here. And the connection between publisher to a certain data set is manifested by a, by a concept that's called feeds. So this is the way the publisher puts data in a data set. And then subscribers subscribe to some channels. So this is a this is a construct that's that's a that's you can that's we can think about some sort of a perpetual query engine. So the channels are the entities where the subscribers subscribe to. And then channel kind of combines data from multiple data set and compute the result. And whenever a computation happens, whenever computation is ready or some data is ready, be fitting to a certain query. Then notification is sent to the broker, edge broker, and then edge broker will disseminate the results to the to the subscriber. So that's the thing. So that means channel kind of produces the result, and the results is produced in the data cluster, and then gets ready for the delivery to the subscriber. And then edge broker fetches all the result and store here, store here to get delivered to the subscriber. And now the caching problem kind of arises in this in this scenario. Where do you cache the result? Uh, cache the result for the subscriber. Why you need to cache? Okay, the caching has happened because 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 it's connected to a set of subscribers and subscribers may not be always online. So that means the subscribers can be downtime. He may not be available or he has low bandwidth. So he kind of shut down his interface. So he's not receiving the data. So that means the broker need to hold the data for some time and, be, and so that it can deliver reliably when the subscriber comes back. Another way is that the, the, to, to match the impedance mismatch between the data generation and data consumption. Subscribers are mobile devices in most of the cases, so they have limited bandwidth, so you cannot consume all the data. So that means there is an impedance mismatch between at the rate the data is generated and at the rate data is consumed. So these are the this mismatch and this asynchrony of access, this unavailability of access, these are controlled by the edge broker. So the, the, edge the data cluster will not see those outage from the clients. It's all the edge broker that will handle all this thing. And it's all boiled down to this caching problem. Which content need to be stored and how long? So that's the question. So under the hood, it has all these different queues for different subscribers, uh, well, and for different subscriptions and subscriptions happen through channels. So you can think, uh, we can think about these are for results for different channels. These are three queues here. So these are results from different channels. And the same res channels results are going from multiple subscribers because multiple subscribers subscribe to the same channel. We can think about that way. So now it's all up to the all up to the choice that okay, I have a bunch of content coming in the queue. Then which content, which 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 objects will be stored and which will not? And there are two techniques we can think about, and we used one is utility driven once again. So that means it's kind of we can derive some utility of of that particular object in terms of what is the value of caching because caching takes space and time right caching takes space in the in 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 the storage so so how much value i get through caching so that's utility that can be that means you always cache things that are in higher utility another approach is called tdl driven approach that means uh, in, in instead of instead of admitting um, admitting objects for arbitrary amount of time, it kind of um, store objects for a certain amount of time. 
So it assigns an explicit timer on the object. Whenever an object comes in the queue, then it's evicted. The problem, is, the one issue, one interesting point is that even though the edge broker kind of drops the content, but it can always fetch the content from the data cluster because data cluster has the par has the permanent storage of all this data and storage thing because it's kind of transiently storing data, but the original data can always be fetched from the data cluster if it's needed. So not in detail of it, but the key idea is that objects retrieved from the broker from the edge point is always bad is higher utility than retrieving the same object from the data cluster. That's kind of very obvious, right? So I have this edge server sitting that's close to the user. So if I can fetch a content from the edge, that means that I, I have a low latency service. But if I get to if I get to the data cluster to retrieve it, data cluster is in the cloud, so it will take extra time. Uh, in terms of just in the in terms of latency, we can say that's the advantage we get. And entire utility kind of boils down to this this fact. And using some other meta information also there. So then the overall goal is that okay, we need to choose we need to choose out of these collection of items that which objects you store and which object you doesn't. So at the, end, uh, at the end of the day, we need to we need to we need to derive some sort of a dropping policy. So we kind of try to formalize a, a, a problem. It's a kind of an optimization problem. And then, and then derive, oh, sorry, derive boils every, the entire technique kind of boils down into this. That means you have a cache, you have a value of cache that derives a higher value of caching that will be stored. So that's the thing. Or on the converse way. So if an item it has least value of cache, um, caching can offer. So whoever object has least value will be dropped. So, so that's that's kind of the strategy, and 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 depending on what are the different information we can use to derive this utility, different types of dropping policy can be derived. So I'm showing is three three policy here. The other technique is TTL driven. So so it's that that if there is no utility assigned to object or nothing, whenever object comes, object is given an explicit time on it. So you can stay on this on this on this cache for let's see 30, 30 second or fifty second or something, and then. And then, of course, there is a certain way to derive the the, uh, the the main question is exactly how you how you determine what should be the time for a certain object. I mean, it's it's a trade-off between if you keep an object longer duration, then your storage will go high, right? If you but but your clients will suffer because you are not storing them enough time. But if you store them in less amount of time, then of course your cash your storage become requirement becomes low. But of course, uh, of course, that will disadvantage the user. So it's a trade-off, right? I can keep them longer duration, but that's an issue. But I can keep them shorter duration, that is advantage, but also disadvantage. So we need to give a trade-off between them. And then that's the way we kind of do. And, and then I try to find the, what is the optimal choice for, for, for that thing. So, um, and then we implemented this TTL caching and then some utility driven caching that we call a LSC, list subscriber count or something like that. And, and, uh, and it, it, we did some simulated experiment. It, it seems like the TTL kind of works uh, good in this kind of setup. So that means instead of looking for all these dropping policies, you just assign explicit timer on the content and then just expire them when the timer is out. So it's kind of easy to implement in, 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 in set in real test bed and, and, and performance is, all, is also better. And TTL caching is not good reportedly for other caching, other scenario. For example, in web caching, TTL doesn't go that much in compared to other popular techniques, LRU and other thing. But for this kind of, for this particular scenario, uh, we got a good result for TTL. So, um, I mean, that's an interesting observation we made. Okay, so that's the, these are the three things that we just uh, just talked about. That is the data when data is going towards the cloud. So that there can be data, some sort of a cloud phasing edge you can see, think about. And then whenever information or content or, or things going towards the user, then we can think about, uh, we can think about edge sitting there kind of, kind of taking care of the content that's moving towards the user. So in terms of organization of content, then we can think that, okay, I have my end devices where my users and things are, these are the outer circle of, of the thing. So we can, we can kind of organize these three entities, end devices, users, edge, and cloud. It's kind of a, this circular radial design. So we can think about, the cloud kind of send, uh, sits very much center in the in, in the setup, and then around the cloud there is an edge periphery that's kind of uh, uh, roam, surrounds the edge with some computation layer and so. And at the in the outer circle, that's a bigger one where the, all the users, applications, people, 
are, are all sitting. So whenever end user interacts with the cloud, edge can sit in between in both direction. And the purpose of the edge is to bring computation closer to data and user at the same uh, simultaneously, depending on the use cases. So data can be set in the data path where data moves towards the cloud. That means data get generated and moving towards the cloud. Or when data information content is moving out of the cloud, going to, towards the user. So that's, that's the way, and it's a computational layer we can think about that sits around and, 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 and can take care of data going in both direction. And the situation kind of happens in, in IoT and big data analytic and applications, and more so in AI applications. AI application is heavy in computation. So that means that all computation happening in the cloud is no more a good choice. And there are many reasons for that impact privacy, latency and other issues. So that means it is time to consider some sort of an edge layer, some sort of a computation layer around cloud that kind of separates end user devices from the cloud and sits in between and facilitates some computation. Of course, these computation problems are application dependent and exactly what we are after, depending on those dif many different problems can arise as we just talked about a couple of examples. So one key issue in the whole perspective, where is this edge? We know the cloud, right? We know that, okay, there is cloud infrastructure and we know where the clouds are hosted. These are data centers and so, and we know where the end devices are. End devices are just like us. We have mobile phones, we have desktop machines and we know, but there is no clear notion exactly where is the edge, right? Edge is, a, is, it, is it somewhere locally deployed server in, in an office space or is it a campus wide thing? Is it a country wide thing? So it can, be, it can be anywhere in between user and cloud, right? So it seems like cloud is a centralized big infrastructure and you have some end users. When I say edge, then it can be anywhere in this timeline. So and normally there is, a there is a notion, it's called user edge cloud continuity. So that means it's kind of a continuous spectrum of computation hosting and things can happen arbitrarily anywhere. And there is no precise understanding so far exactly where edge should be located. And I think the main, the, the critical, the, the, the core understanding is that uh, it should be locality of the data and user. So where the user users are, where you, you the data are, I think based on that, the edge can be, can be manifest itself. It can be closer to data. That could be one design choice. It can be closer to user. That's another design choice. Sometimes it can be, it should be closer to both user and both data. So then that can be another choice. And placement of competition at the edge versus cloud depending on its proximity is kind of a central piece of this of this whole whole thing where to place this edge and what competition edge can do i think i think that's an uh, that's a very interesting topic to work on and i think i think there are some um, uh, some new communities coming it's an intersection of distributed computing and cloud computing and mobile computing in some sense in terms of in terms of two market players are out there in fact i mean it's it's a it's a it's a debated topic in in, 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 the, in, the, in the community. So telco operators can provide these edge services through their BT, uh, base station and others with the 5G, 5G setup. 5G has this issue. 5G has this feature in, in the deployment where you can post, you can host your server in, in, in base station. So that's a 5G enables this, this edge computing very much by design. And then cloud provider can extend their cloud uh, to, to, to enable edge computing also. I mean, that's also be becoming popular in, in, in big cloud providers, especially with Google. So I think it's an open area so far, uh, but that's something that needs to be coming. Another interesting aspect of this whole thing is that multi-tenant edge, just like cloud infrastructure that can host multiple servers, multiple services running simultaneously uh, with isolations and everything, edge can also manifest, can run multiple applications, multiple things at the same time. It shouldn't be one particular case but edge is far less computationally capable than cloud. So, so this multi-tenant feature, of course, will be coming with a, with a very limited sense, not in the same scale, elastic resource sense that the cloud provides. Another interesting thing happens in the direction of hosting intelligent applications. AI applications are heavy in computation. So having all computation done in the cloud is not economically resourceful because you need to send all data to the cloud. That's not, that's not viable option. So you need to do some way so that you can compute locally. That computation can happen on the user space, very much on the device, mobile phones, and there are proposals out there where, where things can happen, processing can happen on the mobile phone itself or in the desktop machines or the end device themselves, on the sensors themselves also, on the camera, on the, on, the, on the microphone or something like that. And of course you can have an edge infrastructure that is a computing layer that kind of sitting between end devices and cloud can host some competition in between. And, 
and, and we need to standardize exactly what those computation can be. If it's an AI driven application, let's see, the, the, dominant app, the, the dominant competition that can be some sort of a model inferences. So we can think about in the future, maybe there can be some intelligent edge. That means they are all hosting some intelligent tasks in the, in the, in, in the sense that they are, they are running deep, deep models or, or machine learning models out there. We can think about some sort of a prediction serving systems, the model as a service, machine learning as a service, something like that. So in that case, you, you train model in the cloud, of course, because training has lots of, needs lots of resources. But whenever you want to deploy these inference tasks, tasks, then there can be an edge layer that kind of runs all these inference tasks on behalf of the application and can, can do very high responsiveness. And I think some, some works in this direction are also, uh, are, are also tailoring in the direction to, to, to enable edge to compute uh, AI driven applications heavily on it. So they're all, they're all running machine learning um, models, deep network models on them and they have a very specific hardware setup for the hardware accelerators and, and, and GPUs and other things. So, so these are the different aspects that edge computing can manifest itself. And, and just, I just add to, wanted to add them. So with that, I will conclude here and I will, I will be happy to take some questions if you have. Thank you very much for listening. So let's see if I see so, Karo, kono question thakle? Either question ta kore file na, thoba type o korte paren. Ha, cipher sir, cipher sir, hand raise kor sir. Okay. Hello. Karo sir, assalamu alaikum. Kya mana sir? Wa alaikum assalam. Bhalo achi kya avastha? Hey, to akam nila. Karo bhai, our question ta hote. Jab kono amra AJ kotha bolke, mane site thirty five mein apne ka example chobi display. थ्रुपुशिफिकेशन So in hmm. that case, uh, that edge would need the, I mean, echo of the user, you know, user authentication like the uh, user actually uh, car car content access such a thing like that. So the edge controller, so it is totally transparent now. I mean, edge controller will be a component of the cloud service provider. Yeah, I mean, I think our monitor, it is totally correct. It is, it is, it is, it is actually, you know, come how be it, it is a cloud area instance. User a kati thakbe na ki user ender ekta kono item cloud er sathe communicate korbe. This is an issue and of course in this model, a a drawing e jeba be dakhano hote. Tate mona hote je a a service ta ashle cloud infrastructure ekta part. Right. Abong 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 service ta ukhane host korte hobe shebabe with with right. the attachment of the media server there. Kintu right. onno reverse choice so kintu ase je kani edge ta ashle dark cloud theke decouple. A edge ta on ekta user ender. राइट So normally we say that is edge is a is a two prong thing. So one one edge ta ek the cloud ke dekhe, abar ek the user ke dekhe, and he has two hands. In fact, he needs to connect user and also connect the cloud also. So it will sit in between, and then we try to connect both cloud and the user together. And I think he he needs both of them. So normally it's when amra jokhon ibabe bolii, tokhon bolii je ek cloud facing interface ase tar, abar ek the user facing interface ase. उंड and this is the limit of the cloud you can think about this is the farthest cloud can come this is edge server or the other way around you can see this is the farthest the user can push the competition so i think it's both way um, i'm not a radial drawing chilo jekhane ekom intersection dekhano hoyto je user competition ke push kore cloud er koto kache nite pare seta ekta edge 
আবার ক্লাউড কম্পিটিশন কে পুশ করে কত কাছে ইউজার আনতে পারে সেটাও একটা এজ তো এজ ক্যান বি সামওয়্যার ইন ইন বিটুইন মেবি অর অর আদার ওয়ে দা আদার ইয়েস ইউ আর রাইট দ্যাটস এ ভেরি গুড কোশ্চেন আমি আরেকটা ফলো আপ কোশ্চেন করি যদি আরো কেউ মানে রিফাত আরেকটা ফলো আপ কোশ্চেন করতে পারবো না কেউ লাইন হ্যাঁ করেন করেন আচ্ছা আচ্ছা তো সারার ভাই মানে যেমন मानिकल मैसेजर <laughs> मीडिया फ्रमार আমি ডিটেক্ট করতে পারি যে আমার ইউজার 1 এন্ড ইউজার 2 আর ট্রাই টু কমিউনিকেট অর শেয়ার সাম কনটেন্ট দে বোথ হিট দা সেম এজ কন্ট্রোল এন্ড ইট ডিটেক্টেড ইট দেন ইট ডাজন্ট ইভেন গো টু দা ক্লাউড ইট ক্যান গো ব্যাক টু দা ইউজার আই থিং ওরকম কোন ওরকম আমার আমার মনে হয় দ্যাট কুড বি ইন্টারেস্টিং সো দিস আর দিস আর मोस्टলি ফর ইউজার কনটেন্ট যদি কনটেন্টটা ইউজার স্পেসে থেকে থাকে এবং ইউজার স্পেস থেকে ইউজার যাচ্ছে ও হ্যাঁ হ্যাঁ আমার মনে হয় যে ভাইবল হতে পারে হ্যাঁ দেখতে হবে একটু আমার মনে হয় যে আছে যেহেতু পি টু পি তে এই সিনারিওটা সব সময় ছিলই পলে পলে ওখানে তো এটা আছে এইটা আমার মনে হয় যে হয়তো এই ধরনের লাইভ মিডিয়া স্ট্রিমিং বিশেষ করে এই যে পিটুপি বিশেষ করে এই যে লাইভ রিয়েল টাইম তোমার এই যে স্কাইপ সেশনস নাম্বার এটা মনে ইউজ হয় রাইট ইউজ হতে পারে ইনফ্যাক্ট আমি আমার মনে হয় এটা খুব খুব পসিবল যেটা স্কাইপ তো ইউজ করে এটা বললাম না স্কাইপে স্যার স্কাইপে আপনি যদি একটা একটা ফাইল সেন্ড করেন ফাইল সেন্ড করেন সেটা যদি আপনার ইন্টারনেটে হয় খুবই ফাস্ট বাই ও বাই দ্য চাই मोबाइल Computation heavy, so actually, mobile run for a bit difficult. Difficult. So oh. at that point, they moved to uh, server-based solution. When Skype and oh. Microsoft acquired it, they took on the key that they transition to it. But one of the reasons for acquiring it, that they agreed to do it, was that actually, that they a P2P it, that they, when mobile will not be busy market for it, that they P2P it actually to service side, but cloud side, it will actually be. Oh, okay, okay. 
সেটা আমার মনে হয় যে কিছুটা কিছুটা মানে পি টু পি ইউজ করাতে সুবিধা নিশ্চয়ই পাচ্ছে কারণ ক্লাউড তো বটল নেক হয়ে যাবে বিশেষ করে বিশেষ করে এটা অবশ্য অনেক করে আমরা একটু টেকনিক্যাল জিনিসটা দেখতে পারতে হবে যেমন জুম ইজ ইউজ এনর্মাসলি দিস ডেজ রাইট আমি জুম বিশেষ করে এই যে প্যান্ডেমিকের পর থেকে জুমে ট্রাফিক তো মনে হয় আমার মনে কয়েকশো গুণ বেড়ে গেছে তাই না এবং ইট স্কেলস গুড ইন ফ্যাক্ট ইন সাম সেন্স মানে জুমের আউটরিচ কিন্তু খুব বেশি না যেরকম নাম শোনা যাইতো না সেখান থেকে হঠাৎ করে সবাই সেই হিসাবে তো অবশ্যই অনেক আমি তো জুম জানতামই না হাতির খবর যাই না মনে হচ্ছে আমরা তো ওয়েট করতেছি দেখা যাক ব্যবসাটা বললো সেটা যদি হয় ডেটা যেমন অনেকে বলে যে এজের জন্য সলিউশন হচ্ছে প্রাইভেসি একটা ইস্যু যে আমি ডেটাটা আসলে ক্লাউডে পাঠাতে চাচ্ছি না আমি এজে পাঠাতে চাচ্ছি কিন্তু সেটা আসলে সলভ হয় না কিন্তু এজ যদি ক্লাউডেরই একটা পার্ট হয় তাহলে তো আসলে প্রবলেমটা রয়েই গেল ফোর <laughs> <laughs> communication service for they don't care about computer they don't ever count any data data to rakhe na tara data to rakhar mobile is computing chole asche yeah mobile chole asche ekhon chole asche mobile is computing kintu asteche ami kintu asteche ha ha besh bhalo i asteche ei jonno bolam mone hoy asteche pole pole asteche ebong eta amar mone hoy je ashbe tar mane computation ta ashol continuously sob jaygay thakbe ar ki apnar bts er moddheo thakte pare abar onno station o thakte pare ba majkhan diye final kore byte kore আমি ধরে নেই যে সামে কিন্তু এজটা আসলে কোথায় থাকবে এটা আসলে একটা ইস্যু এবং এটা আমরা ফেসও করি কখন যখনই এই ধরনের ডিসকাশন হয় তখনই বলে যে এজটা আসলে কোথায় ক্লাউড তো বুঝতে পারছি যে ক্লাউড আছে ঠিক আছে একটা হ্যাঁ 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 আমার তো ফগও আছে ফগ তো মানে আরো নিচে রাইট 
थार्डलेयर যাদের কাজই হবে মানে এন কে এজ এর সাথে কানেক্ট করা আর এইচ কে ক্লাউড এর সাথে কানেক্ট করা সো তারা হচ্ছে এই ধরনের একটা সার্ভিস ইন্ডাস্ট্রি তো এটা টেলকোর বাইরে আবার ক্লাউড কম্পিউটার ক্লাউড প্রোভাইডার এর বাইরে এবং এটার নাম কি হবে জানি না কিন্তু সামথিং দ্যাট কাইন্ড অফ সিটস ইট বিটুইন ক্লাউড এন্ড এন ডিভাইসেস ইট ক্যান হ্যাভ সাম अदर নেমস বাট দিস ইজ এ নিউ সার্ভিস ইন্ডাস্ট্রি ঠিক ঠিক আছে তবে আমার কাছে কেন জানি মনে হয় টেলকো উইল উইন টেলকোতে হয়তো ওদের জন্য সুবিধা তাই না না মানে আমার যেটা মনে হয় টেল করতে আসলে আর কিছু তেমন কিছু করার নাই ভ্যালু এডেড সার্ভিস সার্ভিস বহু কিছু অ্যাড করছে এখন এইটাতে আমার মনে হয় ডুববে ওরা হ্যাঁ ওরা ডুববে ওরা ওরা কম্পিটিশন হোস্ট করবে হ্যাঁ সেটা সেটা হতে পারে আচ্ছা দেখি এখানে থ্যাঙ্ক ইউ হ্যাঁ টেল কো নিয়ে স্যার একটু টেল কো নিয়ে কন্টিনিউ করি এই যে আমাদের ইফতি আছে এখানে ইফতি আমাকে কোশ্চেনটা আপনাকে করতে বললো কোশ্চেন করার সাহস দেখতে না ও যেটা বললো হ্যাঁ ও বললো যেটা যে যে এই আমাদের এখানে যে বাংলাদেশে ধরেন আইওটি গুলা তো মেইনলি আসলে মানে ডমিনেটেড বাই দা টেলকোস ওই তাদের সিম গুলাই তো ইউজ করে ওখানে তো আসলে মানে ওই জিএসএম ডেটাই তো আপনার মেইনলি মনে হয় এই কমিউনিকেশনের মেইন ওয়ে তো এটা রবি তো ভালোই সার্ভিস সার্ভিস আছে হ্যাঁ তাহলে এই এইচ সার্ভার গুলা কি আসলে এইটাকে রিপ্লেস করতে পারে কিনা মানে কোন ভাবে আপনি আর কোন ধরনের এরকম সিম ছাড়াই কোন একটা প্রটোকলের মাধ্যমে টেলকোর ব্যবসাটা বন্ধ করে দেওয়া যায় ওটা ওটা তো তুমি করতে পারো তুমি যদি টেলকোর মত ক্যাপাবল ইনফ্রাস্ট্রাকচার রান করতে পারো তাই না পুরো জিনিসটা তো সার্ভিস সেক্টর ফলে তুমি যদি মেইনটেইন করতে পারো তাহলে তো এরকম তো আছে মনে করো ওপেন ওপেন মোবাইল কমিউনিকেশন এটা তো প্রপোজাল আছে ছিলই আছে ইনফ্যাক্ট কিন্তু সেগুলো সাসটেইন করে না বিকজ দা বিজনেস মডেল ডাজন্ট ফাংশন বিকজ ইউ নিড এন ইউ নিড টু ইউ নিড টু রান দা সেটআপ রাইট কিন্তু প্রপোজাল সম্ভব মানে আমার মনে হয় যে হয়তো প্রপোজাল আছে এবং 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 যদি কম্পিটিবল করা যায় मेरे <laughs> कारण मीडिया सार्विस 
ওদের একটা বিশাল অংশ স্যার এখন টেলকোর সাথে ডাইরেক্টলি কানেক্টেড এবং ওরা ওরা কি বাইরে হোস্ট করতে চায় না কারণ বাইরে হোস্ট করতে গেলে আমার সাবমেরিন কেবলের ক্যাপাসিটি নষ্ট হয় কারণ আমার কিন্তু আলটিমেটলি কিনতে হয় সাবমেরিন কেবলের কি মানে গিগাবাইট ব্যান্ডউইথ আচ্ছা লোকালি তার তার মানে তো তার মানে তো মনে হচ্ছে শুরু হয়ে গেছে তাই না ব্যবসাটা মানে শুরু হয়ে গেছে মোটামুটি মোটামুটি শুরু হয়ে গেছে বেশ কারণ ওই বঙ্গটঙ্গ এই ধরনের সার্ভিস যখন আসে তখন টেলকোদের সাথে ওরা সরাসরি কানেক্ট করে আর কি আসলে যদি হয় তাহলে thank you for the presentation i have to raise here actually on this slide like if the cloud sends the same same image or same context again and again so did your work focus on this issue like solving the redundancy if the cloud is sending the same content or same like content oh, because you have I, I think oh, oh yeah it can it it can but it's it's it doesn't really because it kind of sends requests on behalf of the user so whenever user makes a query or user user wants to consume that particular content it kind of gets there and cache it for some time and then delivers to the thing and if request comes it, it, it you can think about something on the but the type cache. of contents i think are fixed right yes yes in the in this type is is fixed and it's kind of precisely named you can think about okay these are media content and they are they are they are they are named by that so you have a url for the content and then you know okay this is the content need to be delivered to the user so so edge server in the way i am showing here it doesn't really store any content on behalf of the cloud so it's kind of channel seed it's kind of channel seed so that means it gets a bulk of media content and then kind of send the snippet of it but the original content is always comes from the original media server so this particular example that we are showing is not a it's not a media server pro, uh, pro, provider it's not it's not replacing the cloud it's it's not playing the video and anything it's kind of producing the notifications here uh, some doing some some extra computation so that the end user can be benefited but the actual content is still resides on the media content server and then fetch from there so there is a there is a third connection always from the user to the cloud is there so so what and, on the, uh, is there any kind of machine learning algorithm that that it can predict whether it is audio or it is image or oh, it is a video it it, it doesn't predict I mean, you don't need to because because the content comes with the with the, with with the with the content type so it kind of does that but it does one prediction here is that whether this particular content is int- it will be at the user interest at this time so that's kind of pretty for example whenever whenever a media content receives this notification let's see that you you this media content this blue stuff the blue stuff will not be pushed to the user if the user is not interested about it and how do you know that the user is interested so that's the kind of edge server kind of knows because edge server has a model for a specific user by which it kind of track all the previous a uh, previous record of user interaction and for our spotify case we kind of saw exactly how many times user hover on a link this is called hovering so that means you saw a link and then whether you ever clicked on it so if you don't click on it that means this kind of content you are not interested so i don't not i don't need to push, produce any notification for you enriching it because because the, i know that the end user is not going to like that content so how do i know that which content is 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 relevant for the user or not that's that's based on a model that we train i think uh, we, we we train a model that, on 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 random forest uh, with with the spotify data um, it doesn't have that much accuracy because these users user user thing and we don't have lots of information of the user because spotify doesn't give user information to the third party and they they give only six attribute to us i mean uh, that's 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 quite so like you have uh, like produced a random forest like a model for each user 
for no, no, it, this time it's for the collection of all users that we have. Mm. But ideally, it yeah. would have been better if you have a collection of users that's a kind of the we, we tried to model different users based on their language. Uh, but but when we work with the Spotify data, they don't reveal what the language they speak. So so then it couldn't work. So effectively, we need to construct just one big models for for all entire user set that we have. But but those kind of things that's an interesting thing. Edge server can have this facility, right? Edge server is closing is is close to the user, so he can track he can keep track of user interaction and can can train some lightweight model, and then can use them whenever he needs to interact with the user. That's an extra advantage that edge computing can provide. You don't need to send all these user history data to the backend data class if 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 that's feasible. I mean, I think uh, to me, it's always the case that you need to train your model in the cloud because that has the highest uh, high computation power. But you just uh, you just run things on the edge server when you need for inference results. And and of course, in some limited scale, edge can also provide uh, training of those models, uh, particularly on those directions where the data is very sensitive. Use, data doesn't want to leave out the user premise. Those, that could be another example. Yeah, the privacy issue. Privacy. If privacy plays a role, then 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 edge is 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 there for that. I don't know how effective that can be, but that can be one option. Yeah, we see another. Have, just another question, professor, relating to this, like the similar one in your air quality work. Uh, there, are like using the compression node, you, you are uh, producing the graph again and again, right? Uh, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It although is, it is a function of time and space, don't you think that? Uh, for some chance of a of a year, it may be like consistent. Yeah, like you are can, producing I mean, the same graph again and again. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think I think it can be because this is a this is a dashboard like service. I mean, the end under the hood, what we want to do is a kind of a dumb dashboard that shows all the heat map, uh, the heat map of the of the region. So and it's kind of a it's kind of a real time dashboard and it has lots of repetition by itself because it's kind of showing what's happening real time and if if real time doesn't change then that dashboard also doesn't change but that needs to be reflected that that is not changing so so the 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 whole operation was tailored to produce this this heat map uh, over time and if if situation remains stable and it doesn't change then heat map also doesn't change but you need to compute heat map anyway right so and of yeah. course it's a, it's kind of a repetition yeah it's true uh, and 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 of course the interesting things need to be done exactly when things repeat or or you don't have any change to your current heat map then should i need to go for computing it well that's an interesting question and i think maybe you shouldn't but and and there should be some way to detect that okay it's kind of remaining the same so you can replay the same thing but we wanted to have some sort of a real time update of the scenario so that's why it, it has this inherent competition pipeline there. Again, it's kind of doing the, again, the same competition again and again. Yeah, you are right. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. गुगुल तो गुगुल तो आई स्पीडर पेयरिंग जिसुटी उडेंट 
আরো যে কি হচ্ছে মানে মনে করো কোন এক সময় একটা ঝামেলা লাগলো হতে পারে না হতে পারে আসলে হ্যাঁ সেটা অবশ্য লাগবে আমার মনে হয় এটা এটা তো অবশ্যই একটা ইস্যু হয়তো এখনই আসতেছে না কিন্তু ডেটা প্রাইভেসি ক্যান হ্যাপেন না মানে আসতে 50 ইয়ার্স পর মনে করো একটা থার্ড ওয়ার্ল্ড ওয়ার হবে আল্লাহ না করুন আর কি যাই হোক আচ্ছা ওই যে তোমার এই ব্রোকার যে সিলেকশন ওগুলির কোনো সিলেকশনের ব্যাপার ট্যাপার আছে নাকি না না নাই ব্রোকার এখানে ব্রোকার না সিলেকশন সিলেকশন নাই এটা আসলে একটা ফিক্সড সেট অফ নোটস আছে বলে তো মনে হয় না ইনফ্যাক্ট এখন পর্যন্ত মানে ওটা হয়তো রিয়েলাইজেবল কি না আদৌ মানে देयर আর সাম একাডেমিক প্রপোজাল দে অফ কোর্স দ্যাট ইউ 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 রাইট রাইট এক্স্যাক্টলি একাডেমিক খুব ইন্টারেস্ট হ্যাঁ ইন্টারেস্ট আছে ইন্টারেস্ট আছে আমার মনে হয় এই ডিরেকশনে কিছু কাজ কর্ম চলছে ডেটা কনজাম্পশনের যে প্যাটার্ন যেভাবে ডেটা কনজাম্পশন এটা খুব চ্যালেঞ্জিং রাইট ওটা খুব চ্যালেঞ্জিং রাইট এটা চ্যালেঞ্জিং কারণ হচ্ছে এটা ইনফ্রাস্ট্রাকচার চেঞ্জ করতে হয় এটা ভেরি চ্যালেঞ্জিং হ্যাঁ সেটা খুব চ্যালেঞ্জিং হবে এটা খুব চ্যালেঞ্জিং হবে এবং সেটার প্রমিস সব জায়গায় হয়তো ডেমোনস্ট্রেটেড এখনো হয়নি আপনি মানে যে সব কাজ আমরা করি নরমালি মানে সব জায়গায় যদি মানে ডেমোনস্ট্রেট করা যায় কিন্তু আসলে মূল মূল রোলটা হচ্ছে যে আপনার যারা সার্ভিস প্রোভাইড বিশেষ করে আইএসপি যারা ইন্টারনেট সার্ভিস প্রোভাইড করে এটা তো ইন্টারনেটের রিডিজাইন তাই না ইন্টারনেট তো একটা বড় হ্যাঁ হ্যাঁ রাইট রাইট হ্যাঁ সেটাকে রিডিজাইন করার প্রপোজাল দেওয়া সেটা তো অবশ্যই আছে মানে কেউ ওই জায়গা থেকে সরে আসতে সরে আসতে চাবে না আর কি মানে আনলেস ইটস রিকোয়ার্ড আইপি 6 এই গেল যেতে কত সময় লাগলো দেখেন তাই না মানে আইপি 4 আইপি 4 আইপি 4 করতে সাইজ পি গুলোকে জোর জার করেও নাও যাচ্ছে না তারপর তো সময় বেঁধে দিলো ওমো বেঁধে দিলো এটা করে এখন পর্যন্ত সে এখন মনে শেষ পর্যন্ত গেছে তাও তো ফুল যে গেছে তাও তো না আমার না না ফুল সবার নাই দুটো চলছে প্যারালালি হ্যাঁ রাইট দুটো চলছে দুটো চলবে আসলে মোর অর লেস খুব ভালো লাগলো সবার সাথে কথা বলে অনেকদিন পর সবার সাথে কথা হইলো তোমরা যদি মিট করো অকেশনালি জাস্ট লেট মি নো আই ক্যান জাম্প ইন হ্যাপি আওয়ার নাই তোমাদের সেখানে পোস্ট দিই 